Well, they try to deliver it as, as politely and as gently as they can, but there's no way to put it but to say your child has autism. There's really no easy way to tell a parent that this is what your child has. And of course, your first thought is, oh my God. <laughs> a lot of parents describe it as the grieving process, which sounds really harsh. You lose those hopes and dreams of what you originally thought you were going to have with your child. Doctors, researchers, and therapists at UCLA are rekindling Patricia's dreams for her autistic son, Mitchell. For parents, hearing that your child is autistic uh, obviously can be quite a huge shock. I think that's changed a little bit over the last five or six years, as number one, we've realized that it's much more prevalent, and also that it has a broad variety of meanings. It does not mean that the child is hopeless, the child's going to be institutionalized, or the child is mentally retarded. In contrast, it is really now pointing out a child who needs intensive and early intervention, and children can do extremely well. Last one. Last one. What is it? Get the star. Autism is a developmental disorder that involves language, social skills, and behavior with an onset before the age of three. Parents and families are wonderful. They usually have an idea that something is wrong. Some people have already gotten diagnoses other places and are kind of coming to us for you know a, a more thorough evaluation or understanding. So we're also in our diagnostic evaluation process hoping to provide sort of a, a template of guidance as they intervene with the child. One. Yeah! I want one. Mitchell will undergo 10 weeks of intensive therapy at UCLA. When children come into our clinic, we conduct a comprehensive battery of assessments to determine their developmental level, their relative strengths and weaknesses, and to determine their specific learning style. Five. You do. One, two, three, four, yeah. You have someone, professionals working with your child as a team. Everybody's on the same page. And they include you as the parent. You get daily updates. You meet with the doctors weekly. It's just a phenomenal program. They do play therapy. Um, they do some what's known in the autism world as floor time, where they get down on the floor and play with the child, where the child directs what toy they want to play with. They do table time and table work where they sit your child down and he learns to sit there and respond to um, the drills that they're doing. Potty training, everything that your child needs to function in a preschool environment and to function at home and to function in the real world. You work on the whole social aspect because the big deficit of autism is the social cueing. Looking and interacting with people, not only how to interact, but the desire and motivation to want to interact. Beautiful. Mitchell's treatment plan is highly individualized. Doctors are finding that autism affects children in many different ways. I think we have to begin to think of autism as the autisms. When we think of a genetic, a gene causing autism, there's not going to be an autism gene. There are going to be many genes. Even in an individual, there may be five or six or seven genes we don't know. But among individuals, there are going to be many different causes. So we have to think of autism as the autisms. And Dr. Geshwind, a nationally renowned expert in the field of autism, does not rule out the environment. What people have to understand is that they often hear it's either genes or the environment. For most human behaviors and human conditions, it's a combination. It's just that for autism, the genetic risk is higher than most. What I think about when I think about the environment is anything in the environment. It could be noise. So when we think about the environment, we really have to think about it very, very broadly. Question everything on the causes. I mean, we were renovating our house. Did it have something to do with the paint? Um, when I was pregnant, I worked full time. Was, was it the stress of my job? Was it um, the vaccines? You know, you question everything as a parent because you do go through a process of feeling very guilty that, you know, my child was born healthy, why now is he dealing with this and why am I having to deal with this? While research tracks down the cause, the focus here is to give Mitchell his future. Parents hope that their children will develop language. They want their children to hold a conversation with them. Parents want their children to attend a typical school, just like all other children do. 
parents want their children to call them mommy and daddy and say I love you mommy and I love you daddy. There's some that who are nonverbal at age three who will have a year or two of intensive intervention and be verbal and mainstreamable at age six or seven while there are others that won't. That's still an area that we don't understand. I bring him every morning, I drop him off, I say goodbye Mitchell, mommy's going, and we usually have to direct him to come to me and kiss me and hug me. So today I dropped him off and I said, Mitchell, mommy's going, goodbye. And he turned to me and he said kiss, and he walked over himself and kissed me and hugged me. And it was just something to treasure. <laughs> As a parent, you typically think is what's going to make a child happy when they grow up is to get married, go to college, that whole kind of thing. Well, maybe that's not what's going to be in the cards for Mitchell. But I have, I have no doubt that he will be happy and fulfilled in life, no doubt.